welcome back to Senior Break. I'm Jessica Retzel from Independence Village. And I'm Dawn Medici with Oxford Township Parks and Recreation. Good morning. Good morning, Dawn. So what is going on in the senior world? Yeah. Well, yes, we've got a lot of um, new activities that are going to be up and coming that we weren't able to get published in our book. So I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to go back to um, in August. Yes. Um, we had Miracle Quilts out mm -hmm. um, and they did their um, annual garage sale fundraiser. Yes. How did that go? It went really well. They had so much stuff donated. They had two our community room and the senior room just filled and packed with That's stuff. That's awesome. And um, the garage sale was then on that Saturday and people could make donations mm -hmm. and they could um, purchase uh, garage sale type items as well, quilting stuff, all kinds of great things and they did really well. I think they made well over a thousand dollars. That's awesome. I know. Carol Carol uh, with Miracle Quilts was just so grateful and so thankful um, because as some of you viewers may uh, remember um, Independence um, mm -hmm. Village uh, used to host that event for them in their facility before yeah. COVID. So um, now this is an alternate location for them. So it was a huge, huge, huge success this year. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, they were very pleased. So, um, and then what about your um, Summer Sizzler? How yes. did that go? So the Summer Sizzler uh, was two Mondays ago um, on August 30th. It was a great turnout. Um, we had the folk music. There was a bunch of guests that came. They got to enjoy uh, country western type snacks and kicking lemonade. It was a wow. really fun time. Um, I know that uh, OCTV was there too, and so be sure to check out the footage from that on their senior moments and also catch the concert. I believe they have full coverage for 45 minutes worth of the concert there too. Wow, that's um, awesome. So if you weren't able to come out and see it, this is a really great way to enjoy it as well. So it was really great. Well, great. And all the um, residents were really thrilled. And did they have some of their family come out to join them? Yes, they had some oh, of their, their family and friends to come out. It was, it was really great because this is kind of the first... Um, like activity. Bi yeah, big event that we had since COVID. So it was really nice for them to all enjoy the music and right. the company and to be able to kind of get back, back to, to normal. Yeah, and get back together. And, yeah, and it do was really nice. And do something together. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Well, good. So what else has been going on at Independence Village? Any so getting back to more normal things, um, we actually have an event coming up that you and I are hosting. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first part of the Senior Safety Series. Uh, Suzanne from Empowering People's Agency is going to come teach um, seniors about self-defense, boundary settings, the ability to say no, and kind wow. of go over those things. Um, that's going to be on October 12th from 10.45 a.m. to 1 p.m. Lunch will be provided after. Yeah. Uh, so Chef Brian's really excited to work on some of those. Um, more information to come on that, but registrations will be taken through Dawn. Through the Parks and Recreation. Yep. So if anyone's interested in coming for the first part, we would love to have you out there, um, get to see our our community and again enjoy some awesome food right so again that date is going to be October the 12th mm -hmm. um, at 1045 yep and you're welcome to call the Parks and Recreation at 248-628-1720 and you're uh, welcome to ask for Dawn or any one of us can assist you and we can get you registered for this great event so it'll be uh, a lot of information good information that you can take home yes. and um, use in the future if need be. So. Absolutely. And there's two other two other parts of the series coming too. More information on that to come. Um, but we're super excited to get yes. people over to the community and get involved um, with residents and with you out in the community as well. Yeah, so that's great. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I'm so excited um, to be working with you on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm really excited about it too. Yeah. So, and then um, please don't forget um, at the Oxford Senior Center on Thursday, September the 16th, which is next week, mm -hmm. um, Professor Emeritus John Todd is going to be back and he is going to present um, on the, the why, the how, and the what of the U.S. Constitution mm -hmm. since it is um, the U, uh, Constitution 
Constitution Day, I believe, on the, I want to say the 18th, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. but is this month. So he's going to come out and do a lecture on that um, topic. So if you're interested in joining us and you don't have it on your calendar, mark Thursday, September the 16th at 6.30 in the Oxford Senior Center um, to see him present. Should so. be a lot of awesome information. I mean, a good catch up for those who have seen him before, um, yes. but good stuff to learn about. Right. So please come out and join us. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, we will be right back here. And in when a we come back, we have a special guest who is going to tell us all about the happenings at the Oxford Police Department. Hi, I'm Evan Carr. I'm an AmeriCorps Vista. I'm Connie Miller from Free Meal Program in Connie's Kitchen. So Connie, how did the meals program begin? It started about 13 years ago. Um, it was called Community Meals. It was kind of overseen by Love Inc. and there were several area churches involved. Then last year, it kind of all changed. Last year, yeah, last year everything changed. That, that program basically stopped for, I don't know, months, I guess. But then we, we became free meals and we never stopped. So how did COVID impact the free meals? Program? Well, that kind of is what caused the break. Um, we had served in the church on a Wednesday night. We talked to our guests and the team because we knew something was coming. And we all agreed we were going to carry on. Well, the next morning I got a call saying it's a suspended program. And I said, well, I've got a key to the church and I'm just going to keep going. So I did. And that first week, it was just Chris and I out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, I cooked at home. And then I started getting angry calls and texts from the team saying, why didn't you call me? and everybody came back. The cook teams from the other churches didn't come back, so we cooked every week. And just kind of went from there. And that's been, what, like 18, 19 months? Wow. So what is the best way the community can support the meals program? Call me. You can volunteer, you can donate. We need cash right now to buy, we're buying a lot of groceries. We're spending about six to $700 a week right now. And the need is, is plateaued right now, but we are forecasting a spike over the next few weeks. But as just to give an idea, you know, in the past year and a half, we have collected about $25,000 in donations. We're starting to run out now. And we have served conservatively as of July 1st, over 9,000 meals. And that doesn't even address the groceries, the milk, the bread, the eggs, all the produce, produce, <laughs> doesn't even address that, so. Well, that's amazing, Connie. We're glad to see how much you've been able to help the community through the meals program and look forward to seeing what you do next. Well, it's, I, I am honestly just the one that wouldn't say no, but it's the team. And you know, because you're part of that team. And I want to say to AmeriCorps and Four County, thank you for sending this young man to us. And he's coming back. He's done with the program, but he's coming back to us. You have been invaluable. Thank you. Invaluable. We packed 1,400 and some eggs together one day. So we do, we do everything. <laughs> So yeah, call me if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate. Uh, there's no such thing as a small donation, and we don't say no to anybody who has a heart to volunteer. So call me, 248-933-4579. Thank you. Well, thank you. Welcome back to Senior Break. Here we have Police Chief Mike Sowald. Yes, welcome. Well, thanks for having me, ladies. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming. What is going on in the police world? Well, yeah. there's a lot going on <laughs> in the police world. There's always something going on. But, you know, we just came out of the summer. We're still having some, you know, uh, some questions regarding how COVID's going to end up, you know, so we're, we're trying to keep our precautions, keep everybody healthy and safe. That's right. um, so this summer, we really were, um, out on patrol, keeping people safe, uh, keeping our commuters safe. Uh, we had uh, our bike patrol uh, was in uh, full force on the trails and downtown for all the events. Mm -hmm. We had the DDA uh, started the uh, social social districting. That's a tongue tire. Social districting. <laughs> um, so we want to make sure that our guys were present for that. Um, we always know that that uh, our business owners and and our uh, residents 
they don't usually cause us too much trouble, so it's pretty easy. So we just try to stay visible, try to stay everybody out of everybody's way, let everybody have a good time. Just know that, hey, we're here if you guys need us. Um, and thanks to the DDA, they were able to donate us a, a bike uh, through That's their awesome. funds. To me, it's uh, great. So we have a nice new mountain bike for our uh, bike patrol. Uh, so now we have two, which okay. is really great. Um, and uh, speaking of the DDA and, and the chamber, there's so many different events yes. that are coming up. So I know you guys yes. probably have more questions because I know I can keep uh, going. Um, but um, we had concerts in the park, so we were also patrolling for that. And uh, concerts in the park, wow. Uh, yeah. Kudos to the DDA. Yeah, and they knocked they did it out, that, the, yeah, out of the ballpark. I've yeah. never seen so many people at the parks. Uh, so it was really great, great to see folks out. I know people were excited to get out because they haven't been closed in uh, for the past year. So um, it was really nice to see. Um, everything went over very well. Everybody was having a great time. So And we were just you know, right. keeping our distance. Right. And here we are. And love to see everybody out there and having a good time. So And that's, and that's really what we're here for. So That's great. So how is the, uh, what feedback have you received or how are people liking the new crosswalks on um, 20 in downtown on Lapeer Road or what is Washington yes how is that going well I will tell you uh, uh, since the the project has been done um, it, it's it was it needed to be done for a long time right. it hasn't been done in like a hundred years it probably won't be done again for that a long time <laughs> um, but the every I haven't heard a bad thing about how the streetscape ended up um, the town looks great. It I does. know the businesses are it excited does. to to uh, to um, oh gosh uh, get going and and, and uh, showcase our downtown district. Um, the crosswalks um, it is M24, um, so we do get on average about forty thousand vehicles daily wow. through town, which is a lot of commercial traffic, a lot of big trucks. Right, a lot of big trucks. So I am concerned about crossing in the middle and not using the light, but the crosswalk is there, and commuters do know the signage is there. So right. uh, people are cautious, and uh, we haven't had any issues yet. So that's good. Um, and and people are keeping it safe and knowing you know what they need to do as far as how they're utilizing those, yeah. uh, which is. When you have it downtown, you want it to be accessible so right. people can get from one side to the other and like, oh, I got to walk way up there to the light to cross. Well, well, I can just cross right here now and I can go over to Cape Man and Pip or I can go over here to the Ox. Oh, I love so, Cape Man and Pip. So, yeah, <laughs> me Such too. I know that's some cool stuff over there. Yes. But I don't know, I'll give you going on that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so we've got a lot of great businesses in town. We've got a lot of great restaurants. And when people ask me, well, where can I, where should I go with this guy? Good food. I'm like, uh, really anywhere. Uh, right. They got good food. Right. They got good ownership, good yeah. workers service yeah um well for my personally myself i've really enjoyed the crosswalks because like you said i don't have to walk down to the yes. the main uh, street light and crosswalk to walk i can conveniently when yeah. traffic is clear and feel comfortable walk across so yes, convenience it, is key it's yes. been yes. very yes. convenient yep. yes. so um i i like i've enjoyed it so yeah and, and you great. want it to be accessible when you have a downtown you, you want people to get from one place to another so they can service the downtown and see what's going on right. and make it convenient. Convenience, that people love convenience. Right. And if you can get it from one place to the other, right. it's, it's lots So of I noticed on my way here today, there was a lot of traffic going on because there was construction cones for um, Burdick and Washington? Yes. What's going on with that? Well, they're redoing the, the bricks, uh, the crosswalk bricks. Okay. Uh, there's been some issues with those on other, whether they weren't uh, placed down secure enough at one point or the color wasn't the same scape all the way from one end to the other. So they're, they're working on it, they're getting okay. it together and they're going to be around today's Friday until 3 o'clock this afternoon today and then also tomorrow from 9 until 3. So hopefully after Saturday I think they should have everything worked oh, out. Oh, that's so, not bad then. So yeah, so. Um, but you know, it, it looks it's, great. It does. So it's yep. uh, you know it's like hey, you gotta fix it, fix it, and let's move on. So yep. that's just that's just what happens. So I understand not only do you wear your chief hat, but you also wear another hat of another sorts. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your um, your position on the um, chamber? Chamber of Commerce. Right? You know, <laughs> when I was promoted to chief in 2017. Um, there's a few things I wanted to accomplish as far as getting to know, how do I get to know my businesses better than, than I have work in patrol? Um, but get on the Chamber of Commerce, get to know your businesses, put faces behind the names, right, and right. find out uh, who they are, what they need, and let them know that they have, there's a comfort there with me that if there's any issues or problems, mm -hmm. please come and see me, we'll get it worked out. Um, you don't have a downtown 
if you don't have business. Right. So your businesses yeah. have to thrive, and we want to help them thrive. So um, I thought that was a good way to get myself involved with the businesses, to get on the chamber. Um, I was promoted to the chamber president this year. So Congratulations. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, every day is a challenge uh, with everything, but uh, I'm just glad to be able to help out in any way that I can. Um, we're always looking for board members, so if anybody's interested in, in uh, joining the chamber board, uh, we're, we're always looking for uh, good folks to help us right. out because there's always so many things going on. Um, so, and not only that, I'm also vice chair on the youth assistant, Oxford Addison Youth Assistance Board okay. too, and I thought, well, how better to not just know your businesses, but you also need to also know what the kids are doing, you know, and if or the kids, right. kids are having issues, we got to get them back on track. Before I started my career here, I was a youth counselor at Crossroads for Youth. Mm -hmm. So okay. I have a passion for helping kids. I mean, when I started my career here in the police department, I was the school liaison dare officer. So um, I just, I got to know what the kids are doing and if the kids slip a little bit hey wait, let's get back on track let's get you back going here and let's see what we can do to help you help your family out whatever it is we need to do um, we're gonna help out in any way that we can so okay um, right so if anybody in our audience is wanting to get in contact with you to help with either the youth assistance program or with the chamber um, how should they get in contact with you well besides 911 just kidding uh, <laughs> you can call the, the 248-628-2838 number, which is our general number to our front desk. Um, our front desk is available 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. That's where my assistant is. It helps me out. It does a variety of things for me. Um, it's Robin, right? Robin, yes. Robin's Robin, great. Yes. I'm a Batman fan, and it's crazy. Her name is Robin. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so I uh, can't make this stuff up. Um, but that's office hours. Okay. Um, so, but we're open 24 hours, obviously. Right. So um, if you need an officer for anything, just hit the call box out on the, on the back porch. Right. And we will come and service you and get whatever you need. So. Okay. And I will okay. say, too, as being a business, in Oxford that we appreciate you so much and all the outreach and, and everything that you and the police department do we love you guys so much yeah. well yes. thank you and that's what you want I want people to go home and talk about how cool the police department is and how helpful they are I don't want it well I ran into the officer today and he's a jerk I don't want that <laughs> if any of my guys are like that please call me I want to know about it and let's okay. fix it please all right well great all right well now um, um, we're, the Parks and Recreation Department um, Senior Center is mm -hmm. going to have Chief out in um, uh, November mm -hmm. along with the Village of Oxford's manager, Joseph, and you will be out, I believe the date is going to be on Wednesday, November the 3rd. For coffee chats, right? Yeah, for coffee and conversation, and it's just a relaxed atmosphere no set questions or uh, you just come on out and um, just sit down have a cup of coffee and we'll just chit chat about whatever questions you may have whatever concerns or anything that's um, been exciting for you that you want to share or your experiences you're you're welcome to share them with um, the village manager Joseph and with with chief so please come on out to the Oxford Senior Center on Wednesday November the 3rd put it on your calendars <laughs> and that'll be at 9 o'clock if you're not able to come but you have questions or things that you want um, the Parks and Recreation to share with Chief or with Joseph, please give me a call and I will pass that information on. So, and I'm looking forward to it. I love an informal coffee get together. So, um, I'm a book of information and I will talk to you all day long. So, bring it, come and see us. Uh, yes. We'll have a good conversation and some good coffee. So, yeah. bring any donuts if you want it. So. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I'll pick some up on the way. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to go over some more of the upcoming events that we have and then go from there. So, we'll see you soon. Just think, what if we didn't have local TV and radio? Where would I go for local sports, local politics, a mayor, city council, stuff that affects me every day? How about health? Who's covering things that endanger my family? I need to know now as it happens from sources I trust, people in my community. No agenda, no bias like you find on cable and social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local station. Text TV to 52886 today.
Welcome back to Senior Break. Don, what coming events do we have going on? Well, um, we have Jeffrey Rowe, um, who is also a chamber um, board, board member, yep. that's gonna be coming out to the Oxford Senior Center on Tuesday, September the 28th, and um, to talk about the basics of Social Security. So it's a if, good one. It is a good one. So he's gonna have a, have a ton of information to be able to share. There'll be time for Q&A. So if you get the opportunity and you can come on out for that. Um, you do need to pre-register, so please call the Parks and Recreation to do that, and we can provide you with all the details and that information. But we're excited to also have another chamber member come out and share their business information with um, our, our senior um, community. community. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that. And then um, Medi yeah. Medicare oh, open yeah. enrollment is just right around the corner, mm -hmm. um, and we do have a couple of Medicare um, seminars also in the month of September, and those will be on um, Tuesday, September the 21st, and Thursday, September the 30th. So if you're interested in learning or you're interested in changing the type of Medicare um, that you have right now and you want to hear the different options, um, please come out to those seminars and also there will be time for Q&A. We are asking you to pre-register. Uh, there is no cost for those Medicare seminars, um, but that open enrollment period is just around the corner. Um, so please come out and get your questions answered. Mm -hmm. So, and yes. then we have some upcoming events together too. We do. Um, Chef Brian yep. um, for Halloween is going to be preparing. Um, him and his staff will be preparing another. Um, boxed meal mm -hmm. um, that you are welcome to purchase. There will be $10 for the box meal and the first one's going to be for Halloween. Yep. And so he did give me the menu. Ooh, what do we have on uh, the menu? The menu, we have um, salad, ham, sweet potatoes, Ooh. green beans, and um, a Halloween dessert. Ooh. Which is a mystery. It's going to. Who knows? Uh, who knows? It could be <laughs> spooky, could be crunchy. Who knows what it would be like? Could I don't be a know. Bat cookie. It could bat, be. Yeah. So possibilities are endless. <laughs> they are, and those meals are are always delicious, and we really do well. So if you're interested in that Halloween mm -hmm. boxed meal, um, we will deliver to Ox within the Oxford. So if you can't make it up to the Parks and Recreation to pick up your meal, you can request to have that um, delivered. delivered. And to register for that again, please contact the Parks and Recreation at two four eight. 628-1720 to get registered. So and we do need those registrations by, is it October 25th? Um, the registration deadline, I yes, it's, I th believe it's the 28th. October 28th is the day of the meals. Correct, yes. so it's three days prior. So yes, mm -hmm. we need to know ahead of time so that Chef Brian can prepare um, his meals for the community at Independence Village as yep. well as um, these box meals. Yep. So. And I will be there with my spinning board again, giving out prizes, so be sure to come and check us out. Yeah, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. So. It's a great partnership that we have, yes. so very good. So outside of that, um, I also have added two new card Ooh. card games for um, our community. So if you have ever played hand, knee, and foot, I've never heard of that. No, I've heard of hand and foot, but not hand, knee, and foot. I mean, I've heard of like the thing, like the thing kids get. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. This is a card game. Um, today is actually our first day. It's kind of a oh, trial fun. run to see how it goes. And for those that may want to learn, can come out to learn today. But for you viewers, it'll be the second Tuesday of every month. Okay. I'm sorry, second, today's Friday. So second Friday <laughs> of each month from one to four um, groups, you're welcome to come in to play hand, knee, and foot. And we've also added just basic euchre, which will be on the fourth Tuesday okay. of every month from one to four. So all you card players. Yeah, come on out. Come on out and. Do they need to pre-register for this? No, it's just awesome. a drop-in. It's okay, just great. a drop-in. So just show up to the senior center um, and be ready to play. So, awesome. And or learn. So if you want to learn how to play, 
you can always, they'll always work with you and help educate and teach you how to play those games as well. Great. Chief, what kind of events does the, the Chamber of Commerce have coming up? That's fine. I love me some euchre, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this, this time of year is always so exciting. For I love this time of year. We're going into the fall. Not only this football started, but um, we've got yeah. Halloween coming, which is my close second favorite to Christmas. So we've got all these things coming up. Um, being involved with the Chamber and being involved with uh, helping out with the DDA and the events that are going on in town. Uh, the Chamber, we're always doing the Coffee Connects. Um, this last one we did at our station. Um, if you have any questions regarding some of the things that are coming up for the Chamber of Commerce, you can go to www.oxfordchamber.net mm -hmm. um, because we do mix and mingles where we meet at local businesses and we mingle with uh, uh, locals and different businesses together and yep. find out what's going on with them and their businesses as well as the coffee connects that we do and we move around to different businesses um, and ribbon cuttings for new businesses right. that come in. Right. Um, it's a great way to get to know your community. Yeah, we and just network. had the one at the common denominator yes, yes. Uh, in community space and it was so nice to meet people who are in your community to right. know yeah. who they are in the businesses. It, it's great intel too because you get to see all right who are these guys what are they establishing here and you get on the same page with them and, and you, you just say, hey, here I am, we're here to help and uh, the chamber is ready to help you out and uh, advertise and do what we can right. to, to make sure that you thrive. We got yeah, thrive. Absolutely. Right. So, right. Um, and with, with the other up upcoming events that are coming in downtown, um, we're having a pop-up concert on 23rd uh, downtown oh, wow. uh, and a farmer's market. Okay. So well, that's on the fun. 23rd. Um, October 17th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the Scarecrow Festival, which we have every year. Uh, families love those. I've never been to that. I'm excited. It's, it's a lot of fun for the families and the kids. Um, that's from 12 to 5 on the okay. 17th. Now, can um, businesses outside of downtown still participate? Like have a scarecrow out at the Parks and Rec or over at Independence Village? You know, I don't run it, so I'm not <laughs> okay. sure on the how they All do right. the rules, but I don't see why anybody wouldn't be able to get involved in that. Okay, so, yeah. uh, you can certainly ask Kelly at the we'll DDA, and I'm sure she <laughs> would be willing to uh, to work something out with sure. it because we're all about trying to get everybody involved, you know, Oxford as a whole. So, yeah. um, And then they, they do the Witches' Night Out. Uh, and that's oh. really popular downtown, which is going to be on the 23rd from 5 to 10. Okay. That would uh, be so, fun. Uh, scary. Yeah. It, well, you know what? It's It, <laughs> it sounds scary because it's Halloween, <laughs> but the ladies have a really good time. Don, we should do it. Walking we should. around downtown. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We should have OCTV come in and record all the witches that are out and about, too. Yeah. Well, and maybe follow us around. Ooh, yeah. Maybe we can be interviewing people or something. I don't know. Oh, I love it. Or maybe we'll even have some giveaways or something. That sounds great. Sounds and as long as everybody follows the rules, you will see officers downtown making sure everybody's having a good time. So, okay. uh, but yeah, looking forward to that. And then also, uh, we're have, we have our chamber uh, Christmas parade this year. Okay. Unfortunately, we weren't able to have one last year, so we are going to have one this year. And that's always the first Saturday of December. Okay. So we're looking forward to that. So come on downtown and see our parade. And and again, if you have any problems or questions or, or anything regarding dates and times. Get on OxfordChamber.net, uh, right. contact Kelly down at DDA, you can contact me at the police department. You can contact us. Contact and yeah. these guys. Are they looking for volunteers at all for any of these events? I would be willing to say yes, right. uh, because you know everybody's shorthanded yes. these days, mm -hmm. um, and especially for paid positions, but volunteer positions, right. uh, just like a lot of boards, you know, are always yeah. looking for board members too. So um, yes, uh, I'm sure everybody's looking for a lending hand. So, so if anyone's interested in volunteering, contact the chamber, the DDA, the police department, yeah. Don or myself, and we would love to get you hooked up with someone to help volunteer. Right. Yes. And we're looking forward to it and we'll showcase our brand new downtown. Yes. yes. That'd be great. So, awesome. all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Chief. Thanks we for appreciate having me. you being yeah. here. Anytime, anytime. Yes, so. it's been great. Yes, have me back anytime that you want. I really enjoyed it and uh, I appreciate it. And everybody stay safe. Right. Have a good weekend. And be sure to come out to see Chief at the um, Coffee and Conversation at the Parks and Recreation again on Wednesday, November the 3rd. We'll Bring see you questions. next time. Thanks, guys. Take care.